everyone, it's me, Alex, and everyone's favourite bird, Archie. So today I went a little bit nuts at Sephora. I haven't bought any nice makeup in a very, very, very long time. So I decided to buy a bunch of new stuff, whether it's newly released on the market or just new to me because I've never tried it before. I'm editing this video right now and I'm looking at my hair. I was going for beachy waves, but it kind of just looks like my head was dunked in a deep fryer. So if you could just you know, ignore the hair situation today, that'd be great. <laughs> so I have a nice range of things here. Some of it's trendy, hot makeup. Some of it's stuff that I've seen beauty gurus talk about online that I was never able to justify buying in the past because I thought it was too expensive. Let's uh, zoom you in a little bit closer and I will show you how I got this look with a full face of brand new Sephora makeup. So the first thing I'm gonna try now, this isn't brand new, hot, fresh on the market or anything like that. I think this may have been around for a little while, but it is new to me. So this is the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer. Oh, wow. It's like a, a little marshmallow or a unicorn poo. Oh, it's so, it's like mousse. Wow, I wasn't expecting it to be like that. I thought it would be like gel kind of stuff. Oh my gosh, this is so thick. Wow, look. Dior. Look, it's shiny. Is that amazing? Yes. So, this is the Dior Backstage Foundation in 0CR. This wasn't exactly the right shade for me. I could have possibly gone one shade darker. I could have ordered it online, but I'm impatient and I will settle for second best just because I want it now, as terrible as that is. The packaging is literally the nicest thing ever. If you just want a satisfying experience, just go to a Sephora and just hold this. It's not glass, it's like a rubbery sort of container and it's matte and it's just so satisfying. Yeah, well, anyway, you're a bird, your opinion doesn't matter. I have never in my life used a real beauty blender. I have always just used beauty sponges from any other brand. This was expensive and I'm a bit nervous to see if it actually does any better than what my beauty sponges do. Surely, surely it can't be that much better. I, might, I will be mind blown if this is better than what I've been using. All right, well, what I'll do, I will go wet one of these little pink almonds and we'll be right back. Well, that didn't inflate anywhere near as much as I thought it would. How should I apply this? I wonder if I'll maybe pop it on the back of my hand. That was probably way too much. Okay. This looks like it's high coverage to me. Waterproof and sweat resistant custom build foundation natural glow finish. It feels really light, but it's giving me some really, really good coverage. So I'm very, very happy with that. So next, now this again isn't brand new to the market, but this is the Tarte Creaseless Concealer. I've only just tried Shape Tape for the very first time. I liked it. I wasn't blown away, to be honest. I really wasn't. <laughs> Look, this is called creaseless concealer. I think this is a lie. The truth is, if you have under eye creases, there is no such thing as a creaseless product. Hate to break it to you, but there's not. Oh, it's thick. Oh, okay, a really, really skinny applicator. Oh my God. This is, ugh. Oh my God. This is so, so goopy. Wow. I Ugh. Maybe the super glue consistency will actually take away my under eye creases. So I would. What are you doing? I normally. What are you doing? You're not a good boy. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? This is feeling very unusual under my eyes. It's almost stinging. I never react to products ever. I can put almost anything. But this is actually kind of burning a little bit, which is really strange. My under eye creases haven't vanished. I mean, I didn't think they would, but. You do hold on to hope that maybe some sort of magical makeup science has been applied and it's gonna suddenly take away your creases, but alas, not this day. It's not gonna take away my creases, but maybe the product itself won't crease. It's almost uncomfortable. I can feel it on my face. You know, it's not great to be able to feel your makeup products. You like to have a light kind of feeling face. You don't want to feel like there's a bunch of products on your face. I feel like, I feel like, you know if you've got like under eye patches, that's just what it feels like. Like it feels like there's something sitting under my eyes right now. It's really strange. It did blend out pretty easily and it seems to be giving me 
fairly decent coverage. I don't think it's making friends with the uh, foundation though. Benefit, my first Benefit brow products. I bought these last time I went into Sephora and then I ended up on the Benefit PR list about a week later and they sent me these. They did send me the exact same colors as what uh, I bought when I was in Sephora. So I guess I have double ups of them now. So if I really, really like them, then good for me. So I got the Precisely My Brow Pencil and I also got this Goof Proof Brow Pencil. I love this packaging. It's really, really firm. It's really nice. It takes me a long time to do my brows. So I'll just speed through this. What's wrong? What's wrong? This shade is three. I think it's a little bit dark for me. This is what they matched me to in Sephora. And this is what they sent me, uh, the Benefit PR kit that they sent me. It had this shade in it as well. So they must think that this is the one that I need. I'm just gonna take the really, really skinny one now. Okay, I'm liking this Precisely My Brow way more than the other one. It's really precise, as the name says, and it also applies a lot easier than the other one. I have watched a thousand brow tutorials. Honestly, if you type in brow tutorial on YouTube, I have watched every single one. <laughs> Nothing can help. Nothing helps me. I'm just, I'm useless. Tell me, give, give me some advice, guys. What am I doing wrong? Like, I'm trying to feather out the center here. I just, I can never get them even. I just struggle. So that's as good as it's gonna get, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Feels like a surgical tool, to be honest. Packaging-wise, it's definitely the coolest brow product I've ever seen. All right, so the next thing that I picked up, now this is not new either, I don't think, but it's new for me. It's the brand Zoeva. I have never used anything from this brand before. It is called Eyeshadow Fix Matte. A little tiny bit tacky. Can you hear that? You know what that is? That's what that noise is. It's, it's Archie climbing into a Sephora bag. This is feeling extremely heavy on my eyelids right now. It's really sticky. Blinking? It's hard to blink. My lower and upper eye is sticking together. And as I blink, it's like... Weird. We'll see how this base goes, but I'm gonna use the Norvina palette. I actually didn't buy this at Sephora. I bought it from Anastasia Beverly Hills, the website, because I was impatient. So I bought it the day that it launched, but had I waited literally like a week or two, they got it at Sephora in Australia and it was $30 cheaper because I had to pay 30 bucks to get it from America to Australia. So there's a lesson for you guys. Don't be impatient. <laughs> just, just wait for it to launch in your own country and then buy it, you know, unless you have to be one of the first people to receive it. But it launched in Sephora before the parcel even arrived in Australia from America. So, so, uh, hmm, how am I gonna do this? I'll, I'll pop it up here so you guys can see. I might do incense as a base, deepen it up with volatile. Maybe deepen it up some more with passion. Oh, there's just so many I want to try. I guess I can swatch them for you. So, Dreamer, Summer, Wild Child, Rose Gold, Celestial, Dazzling, Drama, Base, Soul, Incense, Love, Volatile, Eccentric, and Passion. All right, well, no idea what I want to use, but what I do have, in the meantime, while I decide what colors I want to use, I got this. This is the Tarte Flower Child, is it called? Pretty Things and Fairy Wings Brush Set. It's cute because it's pink and purple, but I kind of have a thing against the stars at the bottom. I just, I think it looks a little bit awkward. I guess I'm just being picky. It says, I just want pretty things and a pair of wings. Man, these feel cheap. How do they justify Selling brushes for that sort of price when they feel like this. This literally feels like something from a kid's toy shop. They're so light, which they, okay, I can't lie. It does feel very, very satisfying to hold. Not gonna lie. I do like that, but it's also stupidly cheap feeling. So something that I have that's not from Sephora, but is new, Jaclyn Hills. I got her full collection. It cost me literally more than a day's worth of pay to buy this stupid brush set and it's kind of crappy. I say it's kind of crappy, but I just, I guess they're just kind of average brushes. What I really disliked the most was the very, very first time that I cleaned them, half of them lost their shape and half of them lost half of their bristles. I'm very gentle when I clean my brushes, but they did not survive the beating. Archie always demands payment, so I have to sacrifice packaging. All right, so I'm gonna take Jacqueline's JH30. I'm going to the shade Base. Funnily enough, base. And I'll just use this to kind of like set this primer. Well, that feels a lot nicer now that I've got that on there. It's kind of taken away the tacky glueiness of it. So next, I'll take incense. And I'll just sort of 
pop this as a base almost all over the lid. My very, very first impressions of this matte shade, it doesn't seem quite as pigmented as some of the mattes from the modern Renaissance palette. Those are like offensively pigmented, like you very, very lightly tap into it and, and then it looks like you've smeared mud on your face. So now I'll take this JH32 and I'll go into Volatile. Oh, whoa, okay, well that one's very, very pigmented. It's looking a little bit patchy. I don't wanna blame that straight on the eyeshadow because this is also the first time that I'm using this base as well. So that could be contributing to why I'm struggling to blend this out a little bit. So I think I might just take Passion with a slightly smaller blending brush. Maybe I'll use this one. This is the JH36. I'll take Passion and then I'll just kind of go just above the crease like this. Okay, this shade is a dream, like an absolute dream to blend out. It's really lovely. Blending into those other shades really nicely. So colors, man, what am I gonna do? What screams to me immediately is Wild Child and Celestial together. Which color? What do you think? Which one? My bird picks my makeup, round two. We don't have all day, I'm sorry, come on. This is very unlike him. Usually he's very, very keen. Hey look, you can have this again. So I think I'll just go with my gut and I will just use Wild Child and Celestial. So I'm gonna try this Tarte brush. Like I said, it feels very, very cheap, but it also feels extremely satisfying to hold. I think perhaps I might actually put some under eye powder on right now, just in case I get any fallout. This is the Marc Jacobs finish line. It says perfecting coconut setting powder. Now I got this because when I was in Sephora and I was trying to buy a full face of new makeup, I said to the sales assistant, can you please direct me to the newest setting powder? And this is what she told me to get. I don't know if it's actually new or not, but it's new for me. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. It's got like mesh on the inside. So the brush that I'm gonna use for this under eye powder is the Sigma 4D HD Kabuki. Oh, it's funny, I've been using Sigma brushes for a long time and I got an email from them the other day, just out of nowhere. Uh, it was actually the same day that Here For The Tea released that video about Sigma and Jaclyn Hill. Did you guys see that? They were talking about Jaclyn Hill, always talking about Sigma brushes before she was talking about Morphe. The same day I got an email from Sigma and they asked if I wanted to be on their PR list. And of course I said yes. If they send me this brush, I'll put it in a giveaway. Man, I'm a little, I'm very nervous about this powder. Like, very nervous. Oh, I can't really see it. it. Smells divine. I thought this would be like a very, very bright white powder and I thought that it would be very powdery, but it's actually just sort of setting into my skin. It's very, very pretty. I'm loving this brush. I had hoped to be able to put that down to then be able to sweep it away if there was any fallout, but I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. It just disappeared into my skin. <laughs> oh, now you want to choose, do you? Whoa, which shade? I don't think he wants to choose. I think, oh! He uh, made a bite for wild child. So he's a good boy. Normally I would cut the crease to make the color pop. I just, I really wanna see if it actually pops. So I'm just gonna leave the palette down there so Archie doesn't chew on it. Slightly pigmented, but I feel like perhaps I should spritz this. Now I am on the MAC PR list, so I got this for free, and I also have an affiliate code, so if you guys need to buy yourself some new Fix Plus, buy it with my code down below and I'll get some commission. <laughs> this is the only thing in this video that I have any sort of uh, affiliate for. Look, just to show you what the issue I'm having with Wild Child, I'll just dip into it again, like quite you know, firm, like that. Now this could actually just be because of the brush that I'm using. So on the other eye, I will try one of Jacqueline's brushes, but I'm just gonna spritz that a tiny little bit and see if this helps. I kind of, kind of. Okay, maybe this shade would be nicer over the top of another color, not necessarily on its own. Or maybe had I actually cut the crease, I'd be able to see it a bit more. So I'll just put that right on the inner corner here. I'll switch brushes just in case it's the brush that's causing the problem. Jacqueline said that the JH41 is meant to be really good for this, sort of packing on these sort of shades. Okay, that's applied better. So I think it was probably because of the brush that I was using. Okay, I have really, really destroyed this shade in the pan. Like it looks shocking. So now I'll go into Celestial. I think I'll just use the same brush. I'll just give it a bit of a clean. Archie, do you wanna go? I'll, I'll just go put some food in his bowl so he's just out of, get, let go. No, I think, you've, I think you've played with that more than enough, my friend. 
look at this. Yep, he, uh, he, he took it to his cage. Now he's gonna chew on it over there. Not too much fallout, it's just kind of like sticking to itself in the pan. So I'll try it without the Fix Plus first. Ooh, ooh, wow. Oh, wow. I do the Owen Wilson wow so much that Archie's started doing it. I'm not kidding. He was sitting on the windowsill the other day going, wow, 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 wow. Okay, this is very pretty, but I will dip in again and then spritz the brush just to see if it performs any differently. That definitely helps with the metallic properties of the shadow if you spritz the brush. Now, like I said before, if I had cut the crease before doing this, I'm sure that the colors would be popping a little bit better. Okay, I kind of feel like I need to brighten up my inner corner a little bit more. So I'll just take Jacqueline's JH39, which is a teeny tiny little brush, and I'll use the shade Dreamer. Oh, that's very, very pretty. I like that. Wow. Wow, that's nice. That's really nice. I'll put that under my brow as well. Okay, and I think that I should put something along my bottom lash line as well. So I'll take this, this is Jacqueline's JH43. It's like a flat brush and I'll dip into, hmm, Sol. It's like almost like a pastel purple. It's so pretty. Okay, and I think I'll just use this JH36, just a fluffy brush, just to kind of like smoke that out a tiny little bit. It's funny, my mom hates, hates, purple eyeshadows. Anything that's purple and red, my mom despises. She's like, it looks like he got punched in the eye. What do you guys think? Is that, do you think that's good enough? Is that, is that enough for my eyes? It's kind of like basic, but this is a very expensive palette as far as I'm concerned. And I don't know if it's worth it. Like I thought Modern Renaissance was worth it a thousand percent. Like I think that's one of the nicest palettes I've tried. I'll have to play with it a bit more. Like that's my very, very first impression. I've never used it up until now. So I think if I keep trying this and trying the different shades and dif different color combinations, I'm sure that I'll build up a fondness of it. Very, very first impression. I do think it's very nice, but it's just nice, you know? It's just, yeah, it's nice. That kind, that kind of vibe, it's nice. Oh my goodness. <gasps> oh crap. <gasps> my forehead. All the wrinkles are showing. Probably because I didn't set it. Creaseless concealer. It's a lie. If it was so creaseless, my forehead wouldn't be doing this because I put it on my forehead. <laughs> From these Tarte brushes, I think this one might be good for powder. So I'm just going to dip this again into this Marc Jacobs powder and I'll use that to like set my forehead. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. Everything that I have learnt uh, about makeup over the past few months, I have learnt a lot and it's because of your comments. Like you guys are so good to me. You guys have taught me so much. I'm always open to any feedback that you have. If you notice me doing something wrong with my makeup routine, can you please tell me below what I'm doing wrong? I feel like I probably should have set my face before I moved on to my eyes. Or maybe I should have just done my eyes before I did the foundation, I'm not sure, but you know, this Marc Jacobs powder, it's really unusual. Like it just disappears as soon as you put it on the face. It basically just like blends out and melds into your skin. It's really strange. Don't know if it's worth it, but it does smell nice. <laughs> so I'll take this. This is the Tarte Fairy Flush Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Blush. This is my first time ever using a Tarte blush. This is so cute. How amazing is this? This packaging. Oh, when I saw it, I'm not one to usually spend a lot of money on new makeup or anything, but when I saw this collection and I was like, well, I do YouTube now so I can kind of justify spending the money because it means I can review it and stuff like that. I would never have bought this in the past, but this packaging is just to die for. So we've got all these little fairy stars all over it and then it's got a nice big mirror on the inside. I'll use this. I don't know if this is meant to be for blush, but I'll give it a try. This looks like quite a nice shade. Okay, nothing came off. Nothing's coming up. I don't understand. I don't understand. What am I doing wrong? Hang on, I'll try a different... You know what? Maybe I'll try this one. This is the one that the powder was on. Let's see if it picks it up any differently. I don't know, is it, is it my mirror? Can you see anything on the screen? I can't see anything. These are the brushes that they released with this blush. So surely this brush should work with the blush, right? Maybe that's just what this blush is like. Like I've never used Tarte blush before. Maybe it's supposed to be buildable. Is that it? That's probably it. I've had to go over it a bit. There we go. You know what? I don't, 
mind that because I tend to go very, very heavy handed on blush and then I veil. It almost doubles as contour and blush because it's not very, very pink. So I feel like I could almost pass this off as a contouring shade as well, but I do have a new contour thing. I got the Tarte Park Princess. This is just like a massive Tarte video, isn't it? Almost all of this is Tarte. I promise there's some other stuff coming up too. I have never shopped any Tarte products because before I was on YouTube, I could just never justify it. If I get 100,000 views on the video, then I've probably paid for the palette. So that's why I can justify it. But as a non-YouTuber, last year I was like, I'm not spending any money on any makeup products. No, sir. Like this stuff is so expensive. I could never, ever, ever justify it. So I hope that in these videos that I do, I hope that if you are considering buying stuff and you're being cautious where you spend your money, hopefully I can help you make those decisions and sort of, you know, alleviate the stress. I know it can be very stressful. Like if you buy something online and you're nervous and you're like, what if I don't like it? And then you have to try it and then you've tried it and you can't return it because you've used it. Like it's very stressful. So I hope that I can help you guys if you are considering buying any of this stuff. So, Park Princess, beautiful packaging. Ooh. Ooh, it smells so good. Okay, so it's got a huge mirror. So I might just take this angle shade. Maybe I'll use this because this is angled. So I'll just sweep into there. Okay, I shouldn't be using this brush. I've already started now though. Oh my God, this stuff smells. Oh, it smells so good. Archie, put that down. He's a thief. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of fallout on this palette. Be a bit dark for me. Kind of looks like sideburns. Damn it. I was very angry with myself for spending all that money on the Jaclyn Hill Master Brush Collection. However, if there's one thing I do adore out of it. It's the JH01. I kind of feel like this is the control Z of brushes. Oh, you put on too much contour? That's all right, just use this brush and it just kind of like fixes everything. It just blends everything out really nicely. All is not lost. All is not lost. <laughs> Highlight. I have two that I'm trying today. I got the Dior Backstage. Now this is the Glow Face Palette. Pure shimmer, blendable, professional performance. <laughs> I feel like of all of the Dior Backstage things that they released, everyone has been raving about this. It's beautiful. It was expensive. I don't know if I'm going to recommend it or not for the price. But you've got strobe white, strobe gold, pink blush and blush bronze. Use this cute little brush here from Tarte. Once again, very satisfying to hold. Look, I'm just gonna use the, the white, the white. I'll just do it. Okay, that's very subtle. Maybe a little too subtle or maybe it's the brush. Hang on, try it again. Okay, I think it was the brush. Okay, it's... I feel like maybe I should try the gold one because I do have gold on my inner corner. People have made such a big deal out of this and I'm just like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, you like it, do you? Oh, okay, Archie. Well, it's Archie approved. Like it's very subtle. It's, it's a very soft, nice highlight. I can see it in my little mirror here and it just looks nice. Nice. But what I am gonna do is try this new Fenty. This is the first Fenty product I've ever tried, ever. So this is Fenty Diamond Bomb. I know Thomas Halbert loves this. Like he, he literally loves it. So if it's good enough for Thomas, I think it'll be good enough for me. Ooh, really nice packaging. It's got little flecks of glitter. Archie, maybe I'll try this, this brush maybe? Ooh, that's so pretty. Wow. Wow. It's it's a highlight, Archie. Well, you put it on your cheekbones. I just realized I'm wearing my pajama top. I'm, I'm very sorry, but what I'll do, I just roll this up. I'm showing my shoulders, Archie. Scandalous. I've never once put anything on my shoulders, ever. I know Tati does this a lot. Look at that. Wow. See, I told you, Archie loves to say wow. I 
I would recommend this just because of how pretty and subtle and nice it is. And also, I mean, hey, look at it. Isn't it beautiful? That's nice. And this packaging is stunning as well, so... I think I'll do what Thomas does. I think I'll go pick up a couple more of these. I'm gonna do what Thomas is... I'm gonna do what Thomas is doing and buy some more. Just... I'm gonna do what Thomas... I'm gonna do what Thomas is doing and I'm gonna buy some more just in case. I'm gonna do what Thomas is... I'm gonna do what Thomas is doing and buy a couple more... I'm gonna do what Thomas is doing and buy a couple more of these. I'm gonna do what Thomas is doing and buy a couple more of these. I'm gonna do what Thomas is doing and buy a couple more of these. Just in case they discontinue it! Stop! So I'll do what Thomas is doing and buy a few more just in case they discontinue it because it is really, really pretty and I think I'll use this for a long time. So we've got Fenty eyeliner. I think this is new. I'm fairly sure this is new. Feels a bit cheap, to be honest. Feels even more cheap than these brushes. Very, very fine tip pen. I don't know if I can do eyeliner with a bird here. Silence on set. I need to think. So far, amazing. I'm very, 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 very happy. I often find that liquid felt tip liners like these, the shadow like collects on the tip of the eyeliner and then it gets all gunky. It just painted straight over the top of that eyeshadow, so I'm really happy about that. I try a different shape every single time I do my eyeliner and I'm never, never happy, so please don't roast me, just leave some help. Just help me, don't roast me, just, just help me. I need help. Shut up, excuse me, don't laugh at me. Here goes. I can't. I, I literally can't do eyeliner. <laughs> the shape of my eyes, it just doesn't agree with them. Like, look like that, it's fine, but I do that and then it looks shocking. I hope this is waterproof, because I'm gonna cry. Okay, well the formula of the eyeliner is Insane. Like, it is literally beautiful. I cannot rave about it highly enough. That one gets a 11 out of 10. We'll uh, put on some waterproof liner. This is just Sephora. I always end my waterline eyeliner at my eyes, like at my pupils. If I put it right to the inner corner, it just closes my eye too much. I'm gonna use some new Tarte. This type of mascara isn't new, but the packaging is new. Sparkly pink with a little star hanging off it. The only mascara I've been using lately is the Too Faced Better Than Sex. It's not really lengthening. It's not giving any volume. What does this promise to do? This is called four in one. For what? I don't get it. For what? If it's supposed to be lengthening and volumizing, that's two. But what are the other two? Cruelty free and nice packaging? I often find with mascara, I will have specific uses for certain ones. So this one to me, I think I will only ever use this on my bottom lashes because it's doing a very, very good job on the bottom lash line. Top lashes, extremely average. I've never tried Huda eyelashes. So I'm a little bit nervous because they are wild. I really personally like lashes that are very, very thin on the inner edge and then they kind of like fan out like that. I also got Huda waterproof lash glue and this is black eyelash glue. So hopefully it'll blend in nicely with my eyeliner. I got these Tartist Pro Little Lash Helper Lash Applicator. I've only ever used standard tweezers to apply eyelashes. So I'm very excited to see if these actually help because these are shaped specifically to apply Lashes, they're like that. I wonder if I'll have to trim it. Oh my god, they look disgusting. <laughs> Ew. Oh my gosh, I hate them. They just, they kind of remind me of John Howard's bushy eyebrows. No offense if you use these yourself. For me, they kind of look like hairy eyebrows, but they also look like spiders. So what I'm gonna do is put these on off camera. Oh no! Oh god, I ruined them. It's really, 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 really runny. Okay, gentle. Ugh. Oh my god, it's so liquidy. What the f- Ew. I hate- Ugh. Oh my god, far out! Ew! No! That happened. 
That, see that black bit there? That is eyelash glue. It just gushed out of the tube. Okay, that was very, very, very stressful. I didn't enjoy that at all, using that eyelash glue. I do prefer my Daiso eyelashes. Like, these are expensive, and my Daiso eyelashes that only cost a couple of dollars are so much nicer, as far as I'm concerned, at least. Is eyelash glue normally like this, guys? I know you probably can't see, but it's, it's running everywhere. It's so bad. Just wait for this eyelash glue to get as tacky as my choice in television, and then it'll be good to go. Okay, I really like these tweezers. These are making it so much easier. Oh, oh, I take back everything I said. I just bumped them out of place. I feel like I've been applying lashes hardcore mode without using these. You know, like when you play a game on hardcore and then you switch over to easy and it just gets so much easier and you're like, Psh, child's play. These tweezers, like that's, that's what these are doing for me. They are making this application process so much easier, but now there is glue on my eyeball. So, heck. There's literally, there's glue on my eyeball. Why is it all falling apart right at the end? It was going so well. I think that's the danger of first impressions videos because you've never used the product before. You know, you're just kind of like going for it and there's no time to learn. You're just making errors on the job. There's just a haze of gray all over my eyes. This is really weird and probably not healthy. Oh my God. I can't see. The last three things. I have my very first ever Huda liquid matte lipstick. Uh, this one is the shade Wifey, and I picked it because I will soon be a Wifey myself, so that's basically the only reason I chose it. There were so many colours and I couldn't choose, so I just picked based on the name. This smells... smells like Baileys. Oh, I put it on my nose. I'm getting a bit too excited. Texture of the lipstick. It's dried down really, really fast. It's a little tiny bit sticky, but I'm going to be putting some gloss over the top. So I got the Fenty Diamond Milk. It seems like everyone was raving about the other one, the other gloss bomb. So I'm very excited to try this because I haven't seen much about this online yet, but I'm sure I'm sure the internet's going to blow up over it soon. The really nice packaging, beautiful. I really must commend her on that. She's done such a good job with her packaging. All right, so it's really silvery. Smells amazing. It's literally like the highlight, just in gloss form. And then to finish it all off, Cover FX Illuminating Setting Spray. So I don't know how long this has been on the market for, but it's it's new for me. I've heard good things about this. People say really good things about it. It's got really nice packaging. All right, let's give it a go. No. Oh, it's very, 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 very fine. Like, it, I don't even feel like there's anything touching my face. Weird. So I'll just do a quick summary of everything that we looked at. So the, oh, bye. This was a very, very nice formula. It was lightweight, but full coverage, really easy to apply, easy to blend out. I don't know if it's worth the price though. I think the packaging is stunning, but I do think a really, really good equivalent kind of product is this. You know, surprisingly, I think that the NYX Total Control, that has a very similar formula to that, and that's a fraction of the price. The Creaseless Concealer, you know what? It's not as creasy as some other concealers I've used. That's a bonus. Like I said though, if you have creasy under eyes, there is no such thing as a creaseless product. It seems to be holding up okay, but it does feel very, very heavy around my eyes. So not such a fan, but it's all right. The Marc Jacobs setting powder, that's beautiful. It's really nice how it settles into the skin and it just blended out and sort of melded with the skin so, so easily. I loved it. 4D HD Kabuki, that's awesome. That is such a cool design. Very easy to use, so I recommend that. The brushes, they are very pretty, but they feel very, very cheap. And I actually didn't think that they applied the product particularly well. I feel like if I had had the opportunity to use these before I paid for them, I wouldn't have bought them. But if you have some good, good brushes that you can recommend, then please let me know. Maybe something pretty like this that actually works really well, that, that'd be great. The Amazonian Clay Blush, beautiful, beautiful packaging for this limited edition version. I do really like the color. I do think that it kind of goes both as a blush and a contour for me, for my skin tone. The Dior, it was expensive, don't think it's worth it. Maybe pick up like a Jeffree Star Skin Frost or something instead, not really worth it, but, the Fenty, now that was worth it. Like that, that is amazing. I love this. This is so pretty. You can just see it glistening on my cheeks. I really, really like that one. The Norvina palette, this is stunning, uh, just stunning. I'll have to try out some of these other shades. Maybe follow me over on Instagram if you wanna see. I will do a couple of different looks and put them up on Instagram. I think there's a lot more to be explored here, but the shades that I did use, I loved them. The Fenty eyeliner, gotta get yourself one of these. That was 
amazing, so good. Huda Beauty eyelash glue, like get this crap out of my house. I hate it, it's so bad. The tweezers, I don't know what I've been doing without these. Seriously, I, I just, I feel like I've been putting on eyelashes hardcore mode all this time. Buy these from any brand. I know there's lots of brands that sell them like that. You don't have to get the Tarte ones. I think it was really silly that I got the Tarte ones. I could have just got some cheap ones, but get some that are that shape. The Fenty Gloss Bomb, that's the bomb AF. I love this, it's so nice. And the Cover FX, illuminating setting spray. How do you judge this stuff? Like, t tell me, what, what am I meant to base my criteria, my marking criteria? Like, how do I mark this? Like, it, it sprayed on my face, it was nice. So, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know down below if you have any tips, tricks, or hints that I can use in my next makeup tutorial, or you know, first impressions kind of video to make it better for you guys. If you like the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Maybe you've been lurking on the channel for a little while. You should subscribe. There's a green bird here. He's very, very cute. You should subscribe just for the green bird, if not for me. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mwah!